Summit Park Kids! We are so glad that you joined us today for Summit Park Kids Online. Yes, that is right. There are a few ways we want to stay connected with you throughout this week and right now. So right now, you can be commenting down below where you're watching from. Also, let your parents know. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, at Summit Park Church. Also, you can post your pictures of your coloring sheet, your big idea, and tag us with hashtag Summit Park Church. That is so good. We want to see all those hashtags all week long. I cannot wait to see the things that you guys do this week. All right, we're going to hop straight into our big idea. Today's big idea is we are part of God's story, but we need some motions. Yes, we do. Our motions today are we are part of God's story. Ooh, I love it. All right, if you're sitting down, stand up. We want you to do it with us. So on the count of three, you ready? One, One two, two, three. We are part of God's story. Story. Good job. One more time. One more time. All right. If you're sitting down, stand up. I want to hear you loud and proud. Are you ready? One, One two, two, three. We are part of God's story. Good job. All right. What can I do with this big idea? Oh my gosh. If you guys do the motions, take a video of yourself doing the motions, post it online and tag at Summit Park Church and hashtag Summit Park Church and you just might get featured in next week's service. Speaking of being featured, it's time for Celebration, Celebration Station! Choo! Choo! That's right. Every single week we are going to be celebrating you guys, celebrating all of the birthdays we got this coming week. And if you use the hashtag Summit Park Church, you just might be featured during Celebration Station. Awesome. Love it. So this week we had so many drawings sent in and we had lots of chalk art. Psst. We posted that on our Instagram. So if you don't follow us on Instagram, you need to do that. That's right. We have posted so many different things. Like a while ago we posted the chalk challenge. We also challenge you guys to make homemade pizza rolls. Mom made pizza rolls! <laughs> what can I say? I love pizza rolls. All right, so Allie made a super cool chalk heart. Check it out. <laughs> hey, great job, Allie! All right, now on to the next part of our celebration. Birthday! I love birthday! <laughs> all right, help me in celebrating these kids' birthdays, all right? Woohoo! Woohoo, don't you mean? Choo choo! <laughs> All right, happy birthday to Evelyn, Riker, Joel, Sophia, Paxton, Taylor, Riley, Paige, Adeline, Jocelyn, Eleanor, Bentley, Kennedy, and Aniston! Woo! Happy, happy birthday. birthday! Man, we hope you have the best birthday ever this week. All right, now it's game time! Game time! Yes! <laughs> yes! Woo! All right, today's game is Pictionary. So I'll be drawing and you guys guess. We'll have a couple different pictures. When you know it, shout it out. Are you guys ready? All right, first picture. You think you know it yet? I heard church. You are right. Give yourself a point if you guessed church. All right, we're on to our next one. Are you ready? Get ready. Get those eyes ready. All right. What do you guys think? 
Not a couple. Think of these. What do we think? <gasps> I think I heard it. Love, you are right. Good job. If you guess love, you are right. Now on to our third picture. Not a square. Let's see. Think you know it yet? All right, let me draw another one. Not Frankenstein, guys. Come on. All right. Let me switch to brown. Maybe this can be brown, too. Guys, I'm not very good at drawing. So, think you know it? Okay, let's look at this some more. It's a video game. Oh, I heard it, Minecraft. If you guess Minecraft, you are right. All right, on to our last one. Are you guys ready? All right, I'm gonna switch to red. Okay, we're getting crazy over here. You think you know it? All right, almost done. Think I heard it. If you guess YouTube, you are right. Now tally up those points and let's see how many of you guys got those right. Thanks so much for doing the game with us. Man, that was so much fun, but I have something I want to share with you guys. What is it? Uh, we have our big word challenge. I love it. I want to hear it. All right, here is our big word challenge this week, and it's found in the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verses 12 through 13. Here's what it says. It says, look, I am coming soon. I bring my rewards with me. I reward each person for what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the first and the last. I am the beginning and the end. Again, that comes from Revelation chapter 22, verses 12 through 13. Awesome, I love it. We do a bigger challenge every single weekend, and that is because we can hide God's word in our heart if we're having a sad day, a bad day, or a really, really rad day. I love rad days, and I love the big word challenge. Thanks for taking the time to learn that and memorize that with us this week. Speaking of challenges, we have a challenge for you. We want you to reach out to five family members or five friends. Or both. That's right, as many as you can. We want to invite them to Easter! Why did you do that? Because the script has like a ton of R's in it. It's Easter. Easter? Easter. Easter. But why? Okay. Easter. Easter! Better? Yeah. Good. That's right. Easter service is next weekend and no one will want to miss it. It's going to be the best one yet. We promise. That's right. Invite everybody you know to Easter at Summit Park Kids Online. Easter! It's offering time! That's right. Offering is just another way to worship God and show Him we love Him more than anything. But offering looks a little different for Church Online. It does. We want you to give your offering to your parents. And then your parents can take your offering and give it online at summitparkchurch.com. Awesome. But when we talk about offering, it reminds me of our offering verse. So if you know it, say it with me. All right. Bring, Bring the, the whole tithe into, into the, the storehouse. storehouse. Malachi 3.10. Malachi, the Italian prophet. It's Malachi. This verse is a command from God to give faithfully. When we give, we help grow God's kingdom. That's right, we can still give today. And when you guys give, you make God's kingdom grow. Right here at Summit Park Church and all over the world, every time you give, you are making a difference and being a kingdom builder. That's right. I want you to say this with me. I am. I am. A kingdom builder. A kingdom builder. That's right, you are a kingdom builder. 
before we jump into our Bible lesson, let's practice our big idea one more time. Remember, our big idea is we are part of God's story. That's right. So if you're sitting down, stand up. Let's do these motions loud and proud. On the count of three. One, two, three. We are part of God's story. Let's do that again on three. Ready? One, two, three. We are part of of God's story. All right, we're gonna jump right into our Bible lesson. So get your notebooks out, your pen, and get ready to continue our series, The Greatest Story Ever Told. We complete our series, The Greatest Story Ever Told, by looking at the last few books in the New Testament. These books encourage believers to persevere, work hard, trust God, and live with patience. These are instructions for those in leadership, the wisdom about the power of our words, and an encouragement for those that are in need. So of all God's commands, he has reminded us in Jesus' teaching that there is a new command to love God and to love our neighbor as ourselves. And having been forgiven and lavished with the love of Christ, we can forgive and love one another. That leads me to our verse, 1 John 4:19, And that says we love because he first loved us. Now, I'll touch on that in just a minute, but my cousin Ursula just made a video all about this. So let that, let's check that out first and then I'll be right back. Hey guys, welcome to another unboxing with Ursula. That's me. All right, before we start, I want you guys to hit that subscribe button and give me a big thumbs up. Did you do it? All right, so today we're opening up the Love Your Neighbor box. I wonder why it's called Love Your Neighbor. Let's find out. Let's see what's inside. They've got some instructions. Let's grab those out. All right, let's read step number one. All right, step number one says, read First John. marked and everything. Love it. All right. If you've got your Bibles, flip it to 1 John 4, 19. Are you guys ready? You got it open? Okay. 1 John 4, 19 says, we love because he first loved who? Us. He first loved us. I love that verse. Now we got to see what step number two is. All right. Are we ready? Step number two says, make a card. I wonder why we're making a card. Let's see if we've got some stuff to make a card in here. Let's see. All right. We've got some markers. I love markers. Also, we've got some hearts. All right. Let me come back in just a minute while I make a card for my friend Ariel. All right. I'm back and I made my card for my friend Ariel. Ariel. All right, I need to send this to my friend. Mailman, can you come get this for Ariel? Thanks, you got it, it's good. All right, now that we gave our card to our friend, let's make sure that we get to step number four. Are you guys with me? Step number four, it says, you can do this too. So I want you to make a card for your friend. Have your mom and dad help you send it and make it. So that's step number four. So do it. I'm counting on you guys. All right. Step number five. Go love your neighbor. What do you think that means, you guys? Like, go love your, your actual neighbor? Or like a friend? It means both. You can go help a neighbor, a friend, your mom, your dad. That could be picking up sticks. That could be doing a chore that you usually don't do. And your mom and dad are really we love because he first loved us we can love others knowing that we know that is true 
We also know believers were instructed to have hope. Hope for the future, that even though there may be tough times they're going through, hard trials, that there would be glory in the end. Hope that one day Jesus would return. That leads me to our first point. Get ready to write it down. Are you guys ready? Okay, point number one, coming soon. Number one, coming soon. Why coming soon? Well, the book of Revelation is about the future for which we still wait. We dig deeper when we look at Revelation 22, 20. Jesus is a witness about these things. He says, yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. How cool is that? When I hear the words coming soon, it makes me think of a movie preview. Have you guys ever seen a movie preview? I know I have. When I see a movie preview, we know that it's a glimpse of what's going to happen in the storyline. And it ends with coming soon. The book of Revelation ends with the same words. And it gives us a glimpse of what will be coming soon in God's story. This may be the last piece of this timeline, but there's more to come. We are still waiting. This, we are still writing the story of Jesus until he returns. He is coming soon. Jesus had been on earth for such a short time after he raised from the dead. And before returning to heaven, he promised us that he would return one day. And Jesus always keeps his promise. We're still waiting for that day that he returns. All of Christians since that day have been waiting for that day that Jesus would return. And we have faith in it. The final few books of the New Testament reveal a lot of important things about being a Christian and the future of the world. From Hebrews all the way through to Revelation, these books of the greatest story ever told show how God's love for us should affect every area of our lives. They show us that we should love one another. Listen to what this verse says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 11. It says this, This is the message you have heard from the beginning. We should love one another. We also see something from the book of Hebrews. And Hebrews talks a lot about standing firm in the faith when we face trials. So when you're having hard times, Hebrews is a great book to read. And in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, we see this. It says, so now we must cling tightly to the hope that lives within us, knowing that God always keeps his promises. God always keeps his promises promises. My cousin Tommy Streams has a video that is all about standing firm in hard times. So let's check in and see that video right now. What's up guys, Tommy Streams here and we are back again for another Minecraft stream. All right, guys, I am so pumped for this one today. We are back in the same world that we've been in for a couple weeks now. Um, I started right in the middle of the May, so I gotta work my way out of here to get this started. Um, but today, I wanna build um, a clock tower is what I'm gonna build. So I'm gonna build a nice tall clock tower. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build it right over at the front of the church here, um, probably in this big open space here. Uh, to get started, I think one thing that's important if you're gonna build a really big tower like this, you need a really firm foundation. So I'm gonna get uh, this polished andesite to start with that. I don't even know what that is, um, but it looks really strong. Pretty sure it is. So I'm gonna start right here. I'm actually gonna dig out some spots in the ground. Um, now I gotta build my tower. Um, so I'm gonna start, I think I'm gonna make this a um, granite tower. I think that might be cool, um, at least just on the sides. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start one spot in on all these corners here with our granite. Um, so this is where we're gonna start. And then I'm gonna build it up really tall, so. While we're in hyperspeed, um, here's one thing I want you to think about. Um, why a clock tower today? What, what does a clock tower have to do 
with anything that we're talking about. And why did that make such a big importance in building this foundation? We've got this giant foundation to hold up this giant building um, that we're working on. Why did I put such an emphasis on that today? So I want you guys to think about that while I go ahead and finish building out um, our clock tower. done with the clock tower here we are um, and you know this worked out just in time because now it's late at night and it is raining in my world but man I am so pumped about this clock tower it is huge um, it really towers over everything in this valley I've got all these torches you can come in for shelter and you got that view all the way up to the top level looking up there you can see the clock faces out on the sides um, and then all the way at the top we have the cross with uh, the extension is coming out from every direction, so no matter which way you're looking at it, it is a full cross. Um, and I just noticed we got this big lake over here, so that's kind of cool. Um, but you see, no matter where you're at outside of this world, um, you might not be able to see the church or the maze, but you can see this clock tower, and in all directions, it's got that cross at the top, which is really cool. Um, and here's what I'm excited about for this clock tower. Here's what, what I've noticed. Um, man, a clock tower uh, does one big thing. It tells you the time. That's what it's there for. And the reason I did this today is because I wanted us to understand that, man, God is coming soon. It's not like it's something that we're waiting for, something that's far off. No, God is coming soon. And the clock tower shows us that. The clock tower helps us see out in the distance. You, you see the time, you know, okay, the, the time is ticking. God is coming soon. And when Jesus was here, he talked about how he was coming back soon. There was going to be a day when he would return. And I also built this clock tower on a really firm foundation because, one, it's a huge clock tower. It needs a really strong foundation. But here's the thing. Man, this storm rolled in right when we finished. Look at that storm. It's raining super hard. But that clock tower is holding strong to the storm. See, I could have built that on a weak foundation and a storm like this could have washed that soil away and then this whole clock tower could have came crumbling down. I mean, the foundation you put on your life does a lot. And what is your foundation? Is it built on something weak that will roll away in a storm? Is it uh, uh, something at home? Is it like Minecraft? Do you have your foundation built on Minecraft? I love Minecraft, it's a lot of fun, but it shouldn't be what your life is built around. If your life is built around video games, that's a weak foundation. If your life is built around other people, your friends, or, or a sport, or a game you play, or anything in life that's not Jesus, then that's not a strong foundation. We should build our life build our foundation on Jesus. He should be the very first thing that we build into our life every single day. That means every day we wake up and we, we pray. We say, God, thank you for this day. Thank you for another chance that we get to live in your world. When we read the Bible, we learn more about him. Maybe we worship a little bit, but we build that foundation so that way everything else we put on top of it can stay strong throughout time. I mean, the clock tower tells us that God is coming soon, but we still need to build that strong foundation and prepare ourselves and be ready at all times because at any moment, God could be coming and we want to have that firm foundation when he does. That's what the clock tower teaches us. And man, I think this is a really cool clock tower today. Well, hey, thanks for joining us today for another episode of Tommy Streams. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, all the things below. Uh, let me know what you want me to do next. Uh, we got a new series coming soon. Uh, and so I might start a new world. I might just build on to this world. Tell me, tell me what you want me to do. You want me to keep adding on to this world? You want me to start something totally new? Uh, maybe is there another game you want me to play? I'd love to, to find out. So 
throw that in the comments. Also, uh, I would love to see what you guys are building. Build a clock tower. I wanna see what kind of clock tower you guys could build and send that in. Uh, make sure you use the hashtag Summit Park Church when you do that. Build it in Minecraft, maybe Roblox, or maybe you can build it with Legos or draw it. Uh, wh whatever you wanna do, however you can build, go ahead and build that. I would love to see your creation. Well, hey, thanks for tuning in. I will see you guys next week. Thanks, Tommy. Man, that leads us perfectly into our second point today, and that is stand firm. The second point, that's why I'm throwing up these peace signs. Stand firm. We know that God is with us through all the trials and everything that goes on in this world. The book of Revelation is full of incredible things. There are beasts with foreheads, heavenly cities, dragons, lions, all the way to the very end when we see Jesus as the king of everything. It's a crazy book full of crazy stuff. But God was with his people through all of it. All of the four-headed beasts, all the dragons, all the lions, all the craziness. God was with his people through it all. And all those letters that we see at the, book, at the end of the New Testament uh, all point to one major thing. And that thing is, keep playing your part. Whatever your part is, whether you feel like it's a big part or a small part, keep playing your part because it's the part that God has for you. And let me tell you this, there is no such thing as a big part or a small part. There's just different parts. We all play a different role. Paul said in the book of Ephesians that the eye couldn't say to the other eye, I don't need you. And what he means by that is that your eye is just as important as your other eye. And your toe is just as important as your eye. There's not a part of your body that is less important than the other because if one part suffers, the whole body suffers. In the same way, we all have a part to play in God's world. And we can't say that one part is more important than another. All parts are just as important. And when one part suffers, they all suffer. We all have a part to play and we should continue to faithfully play our part as long as we live because that is God's plan for each of us is to play our part. Man, we're all a part of God's story. So just keep showing up to do your part. And hey, I wanna take a second because I know some of you here might be saying, man, I want to have a part in this but I don't, I don't know if I do because I've never made a decision to start to follow Jesus. And I wanna tell you, you can have a part in this. And I would say even God has a part for you, you just have to say yes to it. And let me tell you, the Bible says it's really easy to make a decision to start to follow Jesus. It says this, it says, if you believe in your heart and you say with your mouth, then you will be saved. That's it, that's how easy it is. You just have to believe it and then say it. Believe it and say it. So if you're sitting here today and you're saying, man, I think I believe this. I think I believe this greatest story ever told. And I want a chance to say it. I want a chance to say what I believe. So that way I can start living out my part of the greatest story ever told. I want to give you a chance to do that right now. So wherever you are, if you're sitting in your basement, in your living room, if you're watching on an iPad upstairs in your bedroom, if you're there today and you're saying, man, I want to make that decision today, then I want you to say this prayer with me. And if you're here today and you're saying, man, I've already prayed this prayer. Maybe you've prayed this prayer a thousand times before. I still want you to say this prayer with me because I believe that nobody at Summit Park Kids should ever have to pray alone. So let's all pray this prayer together. Everybody close your eyes, bow your heads, and let's pray together. Jesus, thank you for loving me. I love you too. Forgive me for the things that I have done and help me to love others as you have loved me. Jesus, I will follow you from this day forward. Amen. Amen. Man, hey, can we celebrate for just a second with those of us who made that decision for the very first time? Wherever you are, just clap along, cheer them on, show them love from afar because we love it 
when people make that decision. And let me tell you this, if you made that decision today, man, that is the best decision you will ever make. Better than any decision you've made before, better than any decision you'll make one day is the decision to follow Jesus. Because what it means is that you will now live the life that you were made for. And that is a life with God. So you can now start to play your part. Gosh, that is so cool. And I'm so happy that so many of you just made that decision. Well, hey, I know we just prayed, but I wanna close us in prayer. I wanna pray for this next week. Pray for all of us as we live out our part of the greatest story ever told as we finish our Bible lesson today. So hey, wherever you're at, if you're in your living room, if you're in your bedroom, in the basement, close your eyes, bow your heads, and I'm gonna pray for us today. Jesus, thank you so much for this chance that we get to meet together, no matter where we're at, in different homes, all across Kansas City, and maybe even all across the world. God, I pray for everybody watching this video right now. God, I pray that you help them to understand that we all play a part in your kingdom. And God, I pray you help us to understand that each of our part is important, and we should use that part to show love to others. Because at the end of the day, it's all about just helping more people get a chance to find and follow you. God, I pray that you work through the lives of each and every kid watching this to help their friends find and follow you, learn more about you, grow closer to you. And God, I pray that this week, as we continue doing school online, continue living a life at home, God, I pray that you bless it. God, I pray you help us to learn lots of new things, have a whole lot of fun. And God, I pray you keep us safe while you do it. We love you so much. We pray all these things in your name. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. All right, it's big quiz time. Get those notebooks out and get ready because we're on question number one. That's right, question number one is this. Today's big idea is blank are a part of God's story. Blank are a part of God's story. Is it A, we, B, cats, or C, no one? Again, is it A, we, B, cats, or C, no one? Hmm, all right, write that down. All right, we're on to question number two. Question number two is, God commands us to love who? 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 Does he command us to love A, cars, B, one another, or C, YouTubers? Again, A, cars, B, one another, or C, YouTubers? Ooh, do I sound like an owl? Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Question number three. Our first point today was what? Was it A, coming later, B, coming in a minute, or C, coming soon? Was our first point A, coming later, B, coming in a minute, or C, coming soon. Write those answers down. All right. Question number four. We learned about the last few books in what? Is it A, the New Testament, B, the Old Testament, or C, the library? Hmm. I love the library, so I've got a library card right here. You want to see it? I'll show you. See, look, here's my here's my library card. It's the front of my my wallet. So again, it might be A, the New Testament, B, the Old Testament, or C, the library. Does it make me a nerd to have a library card in my wallet? (laughs) Maybe. Question number five. Ursula wrote a letter to who? Was it A, Michaela, B, Tim, that's me, I'm Tim, or C, Ariel. Again, who did Ursula write her letter to? Was it A, Michaela, B, Tim, me or C Ariel write those answers down write those answers down and let's get ready to find out if you got them right all right hopefully you got all your answers in we're gonna go back through all of our questions and give you the correct answers let's see if you got them here we go Michaela let's look at question number one question number one what today's big idea is blank are a part of God's story Drum roll, please. Hey, it's kind of like when I said Easter. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right, if you said A, we, you got a point. Give Great us job! a check mark. Yeah, we.
we are all a part of God's story. Not cats. I mean, cats are technically, cats are. they have a part, but we're the part. Woo! <laughs> Question number two. God commands us to love who? Who, 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 who? And hey, I need another drum roll. Ready? Drum roll. Mm. The correct answer was... Be one another. We are called to love one another. Michaela, let's Awesome. <laughs> yeah, question three was, our first point today was, A, coming later, B, coming in a minute, or C, coming soon. Oh my God. All right, are you guys ready for the answer? Can I drum, drum roll? roll? Drum roll, drum <laughs> roll. If you said C, coming soon, you got another point. The Good answer job. is C. Great job, great job. All right, we're on to our last couple questions. <laughs> we got two more. <laughs> question number four. Question number four said this. It says, we learned about the last few books in what? Was it the New Testament, the Old Testament, or the library? He's at the library, right? Yeah, I got the library card. Uh, yeah. I love libraries. Let's see what the actual answer is. Okay, the right answer is. Should I keep whispering? Is it, is it okay if we, I talk normal? Because, oh, it's not the library, so I don't no. have to whisper. The correct answer was A, the New Testament. You, said a, you got it right. Great job. We got one more question. You ready for this answer? Yeah, we are on question five. All right, did Ursula write a note, a card to me, A, B, Pastor Tim? Or C, Ariel. All right, do you think you know it? We need another drum roll. The yes! last one. It was C, Ariel. Great job. If you said C, you got it right. Man, add up your points. Find out how many questions you got right. Thanks for joining us today for our big quiz. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us for some of our kids online. We had so much fun, and we hope you had just as much fun. To keep in the loop for everything Summit Park Kids, be sure to follow us on all of our social media. And remember, use that hashtag, Summit Park Church, so you can be featured in next week's video. And don't forget, at summitparkchurch.com slash kids, we have all sorts of fun stuff for you guys to download and watch. We have our small group guides. We have coloring sheets and activity sheets for all ages. And we also have our Big HQ video and our Bible adventure video online for you. So whatever you want, you can go online and find that. If you didn't worship yet either, we also have a playlist of all sorts of great worship songs on that website. Again, that's summitparkchurch.com slash kids. Thanks again for tuning in to Summer Park Kids Online. Bye! Bye.